The immigration push that has some businesses telling Washington to pull back. Welcome, everyone. I'm Charles Payne in for Neil Cavuto. Immigration is fueling a lot of frustration as unions and business leaders work with Congress to come up with a framework. Now, some Republicans are worried a rush deal just won't work. And now they're concerned, of, obviously, that this will turn into another health care debacle. I'm sure you remember that. Congress was in a hurry to pass the bill. Well, even though hardly anyone read that bill or anyone knew what was in the bill. Well, to worry, Washington watchers, Michelle Fields, Gina Loudon, and Dan Mitchell. Michelle, I want to start with you. You know, uh, it seems like everyone's on the same page, the so-called gang of eight. Everyone's making nice. But uh, Marco Rubio expressed something I think a lot of us are worried about, uh, a sort of need to push out a bill just to appease the public and us finding out the unlikely, de the unlovable details later on. Yeah, you know, I think that both Democrats and Republicans are looking to fast track this bill. And Marco Rubio is trying to put a stop to making it go out there as quickly as possible. And the reason why they want to fast track it is because if they allow for months of deliberation and debate, that will provide time for the grassroots conservatives to mobilize and the pro amnesty folks to mobilize and call their congressmen and demand that they vote one way or the other and hold protests. Right now, there's a lot of momentum on Capitol Hill for immigration. And there are worried that if, if a congressman has their constituents down their throat calling them that they're going to vote no. But right now when they've got all that legislative momentum, someone who's on the fence is more likely to vote yes. So, Jenna, what do you make of this? Uh, you know, a lot of people also, by the same token, do have their fingers crossed that maybe finally it will appear that both sides can get something done and that Washington does work. Well, I think it's like they, they put a proverbial uh, bomb present right on our front porch, and we just we don't get to know what's in it until we open it. And it might be full of great things, or it might be full of horrible things. But we've seen this before, Charles. This is a pattern of our elected officials in Washington, D.C., who think they know better what's good for us. That's not the case. We already have the evidence of Obamacare finding out what we're getting after we have it. We know what that's cost. And when you look at our unemployment rates, you, you look at our spending on social welfare, right now I don't see how we can afford to just have a big surprise package here I think the idea of being deliberative and being calm and and and, and getting the opinion of the American people might might really count for something with these politicians that uh, aren't exactly popular with the American public right now you know uh, Dan one of the reasons though people uh, the politicians are, aren't politicians aren't necessarily popular is it feels like they don't get a lot of things done now it's easy to understand the the uh, anxiety if you will over a potential Pandora's box uh, that that we're obviously getting with the health care bill. But by the same token, when do we want to get something like this done? I mean, it's been talked about for a long time. Both sides more or less agree something should be done. Uh, what kind of pace should be taken? Well, first, as a general policy, it's good when things don't happen in Washington. Our founding fathers created a system of separation of powers precisely because they didn't want a lot happening in town. Now, having said that, there's no question nobody's happy with our current immigration system, uh, and we're just going to have to wait and see what's in the bill. I'm confident that with some really solid free market people like Jeff Flake and Marco Rubio involved, uh, that hopefully we'll get something that's rational and moves the country forward. Michelle, I guess it does come down to that. Uh, you know, I guess we're going to maybe have to just accept the fact that uh, the people who are involved in this, uh, Marco Rubio, Flake, uh, maybe for some people, John McCain, that maybe they have uh, our interests, our best interests at heart, and they'll look out for us. Or otherwise, it probably no. will end up. <laughs> you don't think so? I don't huh? trust politicians. <laughs> I don't trust politicians. Look, I think that they need to allow the American people to to have input, to debate what's in this this bill, and know what's in it, and have these deliberations on C-SPAN. Look, the last significant immigration bill was in 1982 that was put forth in the Senate, and before it was, there were. 300 witnesses, 100 hours of hearings. This immigration bill, we've only had three hearings this year. That's absolutely not enough. It needs to be taken more seriously and more slowly. And no, I don't trust politicians to pass it and then figure out what's in it. Okay, so we will not put you down in the Nancy Pelosi column. But Gina, <laughs> Gina what, should no. we be, what should we be worried about that may be in this bill? What, what is it that people are afraid of? 
You know, Michelle's exactly right on this. I, I think when we rush, I, I mean, this is an old rule. Moms know this. We teach our kids this. Haste makes waste. You, you, you just don't jump into things like this. And the, the cynicism among American people right now is something that I think that politicians really need to take into account to stop to listen. There is a big opportunity here, and that is for politicians to say, hey, American people, we care what you think. Let's have a dialogue. Let's stop bloviating and pontificating from what we tell you you need but but let's really step back and listen to the American people and I think the American people are ready to be adults about this if the politicians will allow the the civil discourse if you will well then you know I, I think uh, Jenna's got a great point there uh, I think the American public probably has ha, they have you know they always talk about the adult in the room it probably has yeah. been the American public so far uh, but but having said that uh, we have this public debate, then you're going to get half of the people who say, I like this, want this, demand that, and the other half say, I like this, want this, demand that. Wouldn't a certain way that actually move us backwards instead of forward? Frankly, I think it all depends on what the package is. Whether they do it with one hour of hearings or whether they do it with 100, if the four Republicans in the Gang of Eight manage to to hold firm in terms of getting something good in terms of but what's what that? Hold the on one second, Dan. I'm trying to figure it out. I've kind of asked the question now a few times. What's the good thing? What's the good thing that you want or that you think the Republicans should be fighting for? Well, we believe that immigration has been good for America. Now, we want it to be lawful. We like the idea of guest worker programs. We don't want illegal immigration. It's better to have legal immigration. The question is whether or not they're putting together a good package. That's what it boils down to. Now, of course, when you want immigration, you want people immigrating here for work and opportunity, not for the welfare state. So in the long run, we better figure out how to deal with this dependency agenda that we've been getting from the crowd in Washington for the past 12 years. All right, Gina, so now we're getting closer. That's one thing people are concerned about. Uh, obviously, a lot of people felt uh, President Obama more or less buying votes, pushing this sort of uh, uh, deal. Is, is there, are there other concerns? In other words, what would make this a bad deal for the American people? Well, a bad deal for American people is millions of people coming into this country and continuing uh, in, in, in social welfare bilking as we already have uh, some of that going on now, we know, from illegal immigrants. Uh, a bad deal for Americans would be we already have how many people out of work, how many millions of people out of work, and we're going to add to that that job waiting list, a whole bunch of influx of, uh, of, of workers coming here and taking American jobs. Those are bad things. One good thing that could come out of this is securing our borders. I'm curious why this doesn't really seem to be something a lot of folks are talking yeah. about, but I think Republicans should be pushing hard for and that. Of, co of course, it was ironic that McCain was at the border and actually saw someone jump over last week. Right. I'm going to go to you last, Michelle. we got less than a minute to go. Uh, what about the idea of, uh, of encouraging smart people to come to this country? It feels weird that we educate so many people from around the world and then we send them back to their home countries to set up uh, software firms and different businesses. They used to be the opposite. Should that be a central part of this as well? Oh, absolutely. Making sure that we have immigrants who are going to be productive members of society. We want to keep those people here, especially in this bad economy. We want people who will come here and open businesses and add to our economy. So I think deporting those people after they, they get their education is absolutely the wrong move. All right, guys. And by, and by the way, yeah. uh, Switzerland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, they have immigration systems that have that component. That is something we should copy. You're absolutely right. You cannot become a citizen of New Zealand if you don't have something to offer that's for sure hey guys you were fantastic really appreciate it now uh, i got a feeling we'll be talking about this sooner rather than later this might be one they actually push through